Hello friends, this is Nikhil. So in this class we will discuss about illumination engineering in utilization of electrical engineering topic. So far we have completed electric heating, lighting, uh, electric heating, welding and electric traction and the last leftover topic is the illumination engineering. So when you see this topic illumination engineering, this can be considered as little bit tougher or I can say little bit difficult as compared to the remaining three topics because this is where students get confused a lot when asked questions in other topics they will be more or less comfortable I can say more comfortable to do the questions but whereas here they will stuck the reason is there are many number of definitions involved and there is no proper material available on record or no other source available for the students to tell them clearly what definition means what and what are the units such kind of things are there so we will start about illumination engineering now this topic as you see on the board the topic is illumination engineering now if you see here it says that illumination what is illumination in general illumination is nothing but light isn't it we generally regard light and illumination as same words but there is some difference between light and illumination the thing is if light is cause if light is a cause illumination is the effect of light okay so there is a cause and effect relationship between light and illumination light is the cause and illumination is the effect of light so in this topic there are three different sections i can say first section is important concepts of illumination engineering next part is electric lamps and next we have design considerations so when you see the relative importance especially for competitive exams the important concepts which is there it is the most three star and next comes the electric lamps two stars and the design considerations it is not that important even if you are not having time you can leave so why do you leave that also because this is a very small topic you can easily cover up so most of the majority of the questions or any numericals arise from the first topic only so in this part only important concepts of illumination engineering we find most number of questions or most number of definitions or problems such kind of things will be coming in our examination as i was telling illumination is the effect of light which is the cause so basically light is a form of radiant or electromagnetic energy it is a form of radiant or electromagnetic energy let us discuss what are the different sources of light so sources of light can be classified as natural sources and artificial sources so natural sources are like sun moon or any heavenly bodies or anything else whereas artificial sources of light are nothing but basically they are man-made so man-made sources of light or artificial lights may be of two types because we are electrical engineers always we try to classify a system as electric and non-electric so you will have electric sources and non-electric sources so electric sources of lamps or lights are nothing but called as lamps electric lamps and uh, non-electric sources are like oil lamps lanterns so on and so forth so according to our syllabus it is very much in very much important for us to discuss about the electric lamps also which is our second section so how do you get a light see if you are heating any body it will emit electromagnetic radiation if you are heating any body it will emit electromagnetic radiation how do you heat any body that is the question how do you heat a body you may supply some external heat to that body or let us say you are passing electric current through that body that is what the principle we utilize in electric lamps if you are passing current through any body every body inherently has got some resistance then it will get heated up and that heat energy is given by i square into r isn't it that i square r represents the copper loss represents the heat radiated isn't it so any heated body emits electromagnetic radiation so that electromagnetic radiation which is coming out from a heated body may be heat or maybe light or maybe combination of both so what is there depends upon the temperature of that particular heated body so when you are heating that body okay when you are heating that body and when the temperature reaches approximately around 500 degrees to 800 degrees it varies from material to material a heated body reaches a state called as red hot state red hot state means that particular specimen or that body is emitting maximum amount of heat energy that it can emit because every 
element or every material has got some threshold or I can say a maximum point. It has got a maximum point that maximum point specifies that how much maximum heat energy it can radiate out when it is being supplied with some other energy or when it is being heated. When you are heating a body, heat will be radiated, isn't it? So maximum amount of heat that it can radiate is determined by this head red hot state. So when that particular uh, material reaches red hot state, it indirectly means that it is emitting IR radiation. IR is nothing but infrared radiations. That is the reason why you say infrared radiate infrared waves are very hot. Infrared wa waves are very hot, isn't it? So as you further go on heating that device, that wavelength emitted of that light keeps on decreasing. Okay, wavelength keeps on decreasing, and finally it reaches a state called as white hot state. So it is that state where it emits maximum amount of heat plus light energy. That means after red hot, it starts emitting the light. After red hot, it starts emitting the light and uh, that light will be maximum at white hot state and that white, that li light looks almost white, not exactly white, a bluish white will be there. And that occurs at this temperature range. So each and everything what I'm writing on this board is a important point for you. You cannot miss each and any point, each and every point. And you don't find all these points together in one book. You need to sort it out from number of books and it takes a lot of time. So pay, att pay attention and uh, please note down whatever you see and properly listen what I'm explaining. So that is a white hot state. So when a body reaches white hot state, I can say it will be emitting almost UV rays, ultraviolet rays. Okay, ultraviolet radiation, UV radiation. So as you see, I can tell that wavelength of heat will be more than wavelength of light. Wavelength of heat, why? Because where he heat is maximum at infrared. After infrared, you got the light emitting out of the body. So as you are heating, what happens? The wavelength goes on decreasing. So I can say both heat and light are electromagnetic radiation. Only difference is their wavelength. So heat has got more wavelength length than light. Very, very important relation. We have human eye. This is the eye, isn't it? And what does what is the function of light? Basically to perceive the light. Because if you are able to see something means a light is falling on that body and light is making that body to glow which is perceived by this human eye and you are able to recognize that body. That means human eye is able to perceive what I can say it is able to perceive electromagnetic radiation. It is able to perceive electromagnetic radiation. If you are going to draw a response curve or sensitivity curve against electromagnetic waves, I mean different types of electromagnetic waves are differed by their wavelengths or I can say frequency, isn't it? There are different types of electromagnetic waves, just now we have here only we have seen heat and light. What is the difference that is making it heat and light? It is the wavelength. So if you are trying to plot a graph, a response graph like a frequency response, what does this graph indicate means? On the y-axis you have the sensitivity or sensation on eye, sensation on human eye and on the x-axis I am taking the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation. So if you try to plot this graph you will you have something like this. That means human eye is able to recognize the wavelengths ranging from 4000 angstroms to 7000 angstrom. It is able to detect or I can say it is able to detect the electromagnetic radiation ranging from 7000, 4000 angstrom to 7000 angstrom units wavelength. So that is only called as the visible spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. So whatever the electromagnetic waves are there in this wavelength range is called as visible spectrum. And that you can see. And this visible spectrum will only have the, all that uh, Vibjor colors, isn't it? So what I have written Vibjor is in the increasing order of wavelength. That means this 4000 Armstrongs which I am telling, it corresponds to V and red is having the highest wavelength which is corresponding or near to 7000 angstroms and uh, if you look at this graph at this point you are having maximum sensation on human eye and that occurs at which point 5500 angstroms it occurs at 5500 angstroms this is a very very important question this question was asked in Maharashtra Public Service Commission examination ESC mains 2018 he asked that 
at what wavelength we will have maximum sensation on the human eye. So that occurs at 5500 ang angstrom units. And if you see 5500 angstrom units, that color will be somewhere over here. Yellowish green, we say it yellowish green. So human eye can receive maximum color or I can say it will respond well if the color is of yellowish green. Next thing is the in intensity of the light is given by this theorem called as pointing vector or it is a vector or it is a law is called as a pointing vector which defines the power per unit area that means watt per meter square of any electromagnetic wave that is called as pointing vector. Then we will look at some important definitions required for us in this uh, important concept. So the first definition is called as the luminous flux. It is represented by phi, some textbooks take phi or some textbooks also take capital Q as uh, to denote the luminous flux. It is nothing but it is a measure of perceived power of light or simply I can say a luminous flux is that quantity which will uh, specify how much power is carried by that particular light wave. What is the power present in that particular light wave? And uh, the unit of luminous flux is lumens or in short LM. 683 lumens is equal to 1 watt power carried by a light of wavelength 3550 angstroms which is nothing but somewhere over here. That means approximately I can say green. So you need to keep in mind this particular formula. So far no question has been asked based on this formula. But in future there is a chance that you may ask any question on this particular relation. Next is luminous intensity. Luminous intensity and this term luminous intensity it corresponds to the source of light. It corresponds to whom? It corresponds to the source of light. And it is also called as it is also called as the candle power of a source. What is it called? This is called as candle power of the source. What is the candle power of the source or luminous intensity? Both are the same. It is represented by capital I and it says that luminous flux emitted by a source of light. Okay, luminous flux emitted by the source of light per unit solid angle. Per unit solid angle. So, luminous intensity is I is equal to flux phi by Omega, where omega is nothing but this solid angle. Unit of solid angle is steridian. So lumen per steridian, it is also called as candela. And uh, this is very, very important. Very, very important. Even wherever you find these units of any physical quantity of light in illumination engineering, that becomes a very, very important concept. The unit of luminous intensity, candela, directly you will get questions on units you cannot miss anything that i am writing over here everything is very very important so how do you define candela there is one specific definition for candela only candela is that amount of luminous intensity which is exhibited by a black body radiator which is at a temperature of solidification of platinum or i can say it is 1 by 60th of luminous intensity per centimeter square okay 1 by 60th of luminous intensity per centimeter square of a black body radiator at the temperature of solidification of platinum. So at the temperature of solidification of this metal called platinum, this is a very very important point and the temperature is equal to 2045 degrees Kelvin. Okay, so next we will deal what is this solid angle and what is plane angle and then we will further continue. So, thanks for watching this video.